My guest today has had quilts in almost every single QuiltCon exhibit in the last 10 years. She's also been in many other major shows, and she's also in this year's QuiltCon, and her quilt partisan is on the cover of QuiltCon magazine. Hi, I'm Christine Lundblad with Quilting Arts and QuiltCon magazine, and my guest Susan Braverman is our cover artist. Welcome, Susan. Thank you for uh, agreeing to meet with me and talk about it. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. Oh, you're welcome. And you are in your sewing studio slash spare room uh, in, yes. <laughs> in San Antonio, which I know is a very vibrant quilting community. A lot of great quilters down there. Um, but I just wanted to start because you're, I, I, I looked at your website, uh, which is wildpoppyarts.com, correct? Correct, yes. Um, Almost every single one of those quilts in your gallery uh, were were winners of something or featured in some gallery, and you know it's pretty impressive, Susan. Your your work is really amazing. Um, Thank you, and, and congratulations for all that. Um, so tell me a little bit about your inspiration. I know you've been quilting off and on, but but more seriously since about 2019, I think you said. So what, what's sort of your inspiration um, uh, about, about quilting? Well, I think mostly it, well, it allows me to express my creativity um, in a way that's very, uh, very structured and I can control it. There, my, most of my life has been out of my control <laughs> for a variety of different reasons, but but I find quilting it, it allows me to um, to control it from the from the very start of an idea all the way to the completion of it. How I mm. the, the layout, the colors, the the design, the construction, mm. then how it's completed. It's just um, it's I I love it, and it it's a way to combine art mm. and uh, and structure into functional objects and yeah. and they they become uh things that you can keep and hold yeah. and, and yeah oh they're great they're they're tactile art which is fabulous um and you are also a painter um you have some beautiful watercolors on your website as well and you know that that is a whole other side a different part of the of yourself maybe from your quilt self um as well as it is and, and it allows me to um to access different parts of you know right brain left brain it's the it's a, a watercolor is a um has a mind of its own and it, uh -huh. it it once it hits the paper it's sort of you can you can use different techniques to to sort of guide it and help it you know achieve what you're looking for but but it 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 has a it does its own thing and I find that um exciting and different from quilting you know right, you can, right. You, when when, you, when I'm in a, a creative rut in one aspect then I kind of move on to something else and it just opens up yeah. different ideas yeah now when you're creating quilts are you um are you ever like participating do you have like a challenge for yourself in the or are you thinking of a particular show and what they're looking for or yeah. how, um, is it organic more organic than that um most of it is organic it, well particularly with quilt con they'll they, they come up with you know the block challenges and then yeah, the yeah. challenges so I, I like to to work with those every year because I feel like it's an opportunity to kind of really dig into something mm. a little focused but most of my ideas just um, they just sort of happen. I, I, I don't, and I don't really know. I wish I had something profound to say that was, my <laughs> but, but I don't, they, I, I start with, I, um, I, I start with, I guess more of a, um, composition, aspect. Yeah. you know, I decide, well, I, you know, I need to put elements in, in, mm these different places for a, for a whole composition. And then, yeah. and then I, I figure out the shapes that I want to use. And I, then I work with color and I, you know, it just yeah. kind of evolves. I, I really, it's very difficult to explain my process. 
I, I can imagine because it is, it's so much a part of you too. Sometimes it's just hard, hard to articulate because it's just sort of part of you in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and your, your quilt, um, that's on the cover, um, is so in the, and the, on the cover, it's just a detail. The, the quilt has more to it. And, and it's, it's in the gallery of the, the show gallery in, in the magazine, you can see the whole thing. Um, it's, I, I just, I love the composition. I'm a, a huge log cabin fan. So I love any kind of log cabin variation. And, and the one, one thing that I, I'm just crazy about in that is it's very colorful, but you've got that dark blue, um, back, it's, it's in the background and it kind of gets narrow and larger again, like a sound wave in the background. And I, it's so, there's just enough movement. It, it's, it makes it so vibrant. Um, it's, it's really beautiful. And thank and you. Well, and that was, um, cause I, when I first was thinking about that, that layout, I didn't have it there. And then <sighs> I just had the, you know, the, the half of the, of the block, the courthouse steps blocks. And, yeah. and I was, it, it just needed something else. And so I took, I, I just, uh, as I was designing it, and yeah. then I stuck those blocks of colors in the the strips. And at first they were all the same size. And then I thought, mm, that's boring. And so then I changed the sizes a little bit. And then that secondary design sort of evolved from that. And then I, after I had the darker colors in there, then I, I brought up the, the color of the top of the, of each of the log yeah. cabins to, to sort of meet and, draw them together oh, so it's sort of an evolution now when you're working that way are you at that point are you on a design wall are you still sketching are you in sort of eq or any kind of uh, electric filter program? i do i i do most pretty much all of my design work in electric filter you do yeah so you could then you could you were, were manipulating that that blue color in on the yes. uh, in mm -hmm. the design software yep that's yep. Very, that's a very efficient way <laughs> Well, and a, a lot of a lot of folks use Adobe Illustrator, and I, I've yeah. I've tried that. I um, I do from time to time. Yeah, uh, aspects of Illustrator, but I just I first started to design quilts and EQ, and yeah. I just it's very easy for me to use. Yeah. So I, just, I, I, I think you know, when you find something like that and it works for you. I mean, I know a lot of friends who are graphic designers and they're quilters, and you know the Adobe products are like, they no, they could work them in their sleep, but the learning curve is a little bit much for the average quilter, maybe. Right. And I'm not, I'm not a, a trained artist or graphic designer by any stretch. And so I, um, I learned Adobe just by, you know, yes, <laughs> it and lots of YouTube videos. So I, I yeah. can use yeah. it, but it's not a native language for sure. Now, what else um, influences uh, your quilts are you are, are like uh, taking walks and taking pictures outdoors or anything anything like that um it, outdoor well I guess um color palettes you know from yeah. nature and just the, the the natural way we view colors and and what attracts our attention mm. and then architecture is another one um I take oh a lot yeah of, you know and it's very art. very structural very, very geometric yes yeah. uh-huh and um, ideas, just ideas from nature, but I'm, I'm not a um, realistic quilter. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll take uh, objects and abstract them. Yes. Um, like this, this guy over here. Yes, that, that's very beautiful abstract floral. Interpretation mm. of a flower, but um, I, I'm not a um, re representational, realistic. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's almost like a, Almost looks like a dogwood a little with that little inset pink there. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now you uh, you also quilt your own quilts. I do. I yeah. have a long arm, and I um I I do I even though I have a long arm, I still do a lot of straight line quilting just because it's easier for me, and I I feel like it um it lets the the design and the composition be the focus versus yeah. um intricate quilting, which I'm not very good at. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really well. admire that intricate quilting when I see it though it's 
I don't think I could ever do it myself. But. Yeah. I mean, some people just have very beautiful skills at that, but I'm not yeah. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe someday. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you are, um, so you are making a lot of quilts. You are maybe breaking into making patterns uh we were we were discussing a little bit um and maybe yeah, I, and... I have a um I have a design that I uh, recently wrote a pattern for and I'm in the process of get, having it reviewed by a technical editor and we're putting yeah. some final touches on it being tested by a few folks and and yeah I'll be launching that soon I'm excited about it although I I must say I would rather design a quilt than write a pattern because writing right. pattern is very difficult for me. Oh, I know. I know. It is. Yeah. It's very challenging. If, yeah. And I, it, who knew, right? I just had never tried it before, but now I, I guess I know why. I yeah. So long. <laughs> well, it, it is funny because everybody who submits to us for Cool Calm Magazine, they have to, that we ask them to send the pattern to us, but uh -huh. they usually have to rewrite it in our style anyway. So it's almost like, we're, we're kind of doing it all, all over again. Um, right. Because first, for, for whatever reason, it's it's easy for me to design a quilt and then figure out, well, I need to sew this first and this shape, yeah. and, you know, the sequence of events, but to try to to describe that to someone yeah. else so that they can follow it easily is yeah. challenging. It really it is. is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and the accuracy, obviously, is very important. Now, oh, yeah. when, mm -hmm. when you have that, for sale, is that something that is going to be on your website or will it be, will you sell it somewhere else or? Um, well, I, it'll be in Etsy, but I'll have okay. a link on that. I'll, I'll link it to my website. So that Okay. Can... So you have an Etsy shop oh, as well as, as your website. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, people really need to uh, go and look at your website because it's fantastic. Thank you. Um, what, so what's next? Are you, do you have any, um, Anything lurking in your brain? Are you are you working on anything in particular right now, or um, just to, some more designs for quilts? Because that's I, I'm always you know as soon as I finish one thing, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about the next thing before that one is even done. Um, and I'm going to launch the pattern soon, and yeah. um, probably think about writing another one. But you know, um, <laughs> not know if I'm ready for that pain yet. But uh, <laughs> then um, and. and I need to consider uh, putting together some curriculum for some classes and yeah. tutorials, but um, that's also a target for the future. Yeah, that's great. Once you have some patterns too, you can you can um, you know have something that kind of will sure, fit into yeah. a class kind of thing. Yeah, that's excellent. It's really phenomenal. Well, you know, I, I just really want to thank you so much for for taking the time. It was lovely to learn more about you and your background and to uh, see your fabulous quilt Thank you. <laughs> on the cover of the magazine. And I assume you'll be going to QuiltCon and yes, mm -hmm. yep. we'll enjoy your trip. I, it's, uh, you know, such an experience. And yeah, I'm sure it must be so much fun to walk around the corner and see your, see your quilt hanging there. Just, oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you so much again, Susan. Take You're care. welcome. And, and we look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you. Oh, uh, gosh. We're...